I'll say on the onset, if there's anyone under my voice that don't know who the Lord is, you still have time right now. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus was died and was raised from the grave, thou shalt be saved. Turn with me to Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23. We'll be looking at verses 39 through 43. Luke chapter 23. Verses 39 through 43. And it reads that the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answerer rebuked him, saying, Does not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward for our deeds. But this man had done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. May the Lord have a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. Amen. Just for a little while, I'd like to speak from the top. There's never a bad time to be saved. There's never a bad time to be saved. The older I get, the more I realize how valuable time is. In some situations, I would have rather lost money than time. Yeah. Because if you make a couple of quick moves in your finances, you can recover those dollars, but I'm here to tell you there's no receipt for time. Can't get it and take it back to Walmart. They ain't refund you 30 minutes. When it's lost, it's gone. And the older people would say, time that has been won't be no more. Time is a fickle thing because when you're with the right person, time seems to float on by. But when you're in the company of somebody you don't want to be around, it seems like time slows down. When you're at work, it seems like every five minutes, it seems like five hours. But as soon as you clock out at five, it seems like it's five o'clock in the morning all over again. But no matter what part of life you in, whether you're at work, you at job, you with friends, with family, it doesn't matter. There's never a bad time to be saved. You have some that sit on the outside and say, well, when I get it right, I go in. Let me be the first to tell you, you'll never get it right. Because if you could get it right on your own, we would need a Savior to come down and down on the cross and ride early the third day morning and we could fix it ourselves. If it was something now, now that we all want to fix it, we would need Jesus. But there are some areas in our life that Ajax can't clean. There are some blemishes on our record that Paul Watts won't bleach out. Only thing that can fix it is the blood of Jesus Christ. What can wash? Away my sin, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Put your Ajax up, put your Clorox up. You need Jesus. I say it loud for the ones in the back. You need Jesus. Not the 900 number, not Facebook, not Twitter, not Snapchat. None of that stuff gonna work in the midnight hour when nobody's answering your text back. The social media won't work when you cry at midnight tears. The only thing you can do is talk to God. And I'm here to tell you, he's standing by listening and waiting, just waiting for you to get it over to him. We find ourselves in the text and we are on our way to Calvary. Christ is went from judgment hall to judgment hall and they found him guilty on fraudulent charges. He's carried his cross up the hill and he's centered in between two thieves. Those that don't know Jesus is dying and he had not did nothing. Right. I don't know about you, but it seems like the worst whoop is when you're getting whooped for something you didn't do. Uh -huh. 
They got two older brothers, and every time they could share them lame on me, they would. And since mama wasn't there, she didn't know no better, so she just whooped who was talking about. And the Bible says when the two are gathered, that means this is a true witness. They were not true, y'all. But I had to take the punishment because I had witnesses say that I did it. Christ is taking the punishment and no one seen him do nothing. Think about it. We, we get so happy thinking about salvation, but think about what Jesus went through. To sit up there and, and get ridiculed and slapped on and nailed on and whipped on for nothing. A lot of us won't do anything for nothing. I should and I don't want to take the trash out. This is a prize on the other side. But the only thing that Christ was prized after dying was a cold grave. And he did it just for us, so I can sit up here and testify that there's never a bad time to be saved. You can be saved, and you're still in your sin. You can be saved, and you're still with that person you shouldn't be with. You can be saved, and you ain't smart. You can be saved with no high school diploma. You can be saved with no GED. You can be saved with no masters. You can be saved with no money. You can be saved and you think you can be saved and you still in never a bad time to be saved. I come here to stay to remove all barriers out your way because anybody that's trying to get there will remove whatever they need to to get to Jesus. Come here, woman with the issue of blood. Yeah, right. She wasn't even supposed to be outside, but in her mind she said, Oh, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I know I can be made whole. Oh, never a bad time to be saved. Come here, man, with the daughter that was dying. He said, Lord, don't come into my house. When I say go, people go. When I say stay, people say just. Speak a word. And my daughter will live and his daughter did live again because they never had time to be saved. It was a woman taking her son out to the uh, to graveyard and they called him a beer. Christ touched the beer and the son set up. Because there's never a bad time to be saved. And if you say you can take it to your friend, go into the heads of the Bible and say, God is still. Wait, he's still offering the invitation. It's still open that if you want to suck with him, he'll suck with you. Yeah. Come on, you gotta get away from being cool and being, being, being Mr. Socialite, being Mrs. Uh, Jonesboro. God is looking for people who wants to be saved. Yeah. Because guess what? Your status died when you go in the grave. There's still people that pass away who Facebook still get comments on, but they can't read them. Uh, Ooh, girl, I miss you so much. She can't read it. So now you're doing it not only in memory, you're doing it in memorial because they can't read it. So it behooves us whether you got a hundred thousand friends or ain't got nobody but a friend in Jesus, you better be saved. Yeah. You look at the news and Listen to these crazy politicians. You better get you some Jesus. Because one day the door is going to be closed. Yeah, I like to say what people don't like to talk about. One day Christ is going to turn down the lights. Come here, the one, the, the, the five that was wise and the five that was foolish, they had to leave and go get some more for their left. But by the time they got that, the bridegroom came. And they went and knocked on the door. He said, depart from me. I know you're not. Oh, it's going to be a sad day. You stand in front of Jesus. And he looked you square eyes. And say, depart from me. I know you're not. But you don't have to hear the words. You got breath in your body. As the season saints say, you got uh, blood running warm in your back. So you got an ample time right now to tell the Lord I'm sorry, save my soul. Yeah. I know who you are, but I want to go closer to the Lord. Grant me a closer walk with yeah. thee. Grant it, Jesus, if you please. I need to know who you are. Yeah. And you ain't got to be ashamed. Give me what's dead. He said, well, now, Lord, if it's you, let the ground be wet and the rag be dry. Yeah. He did it. Get it still wasn't pleased. He said, you know what? Pick it one more time. Now let the grass be dry and the cough be wet. And he did it. If you really want to know who God is, he'll show you 
time. Yeah. He'll show it in your finances. He'll show it through your friends. He'll show it through your enemies. God will show you that he is who he say he is. But he ain't going to beat you up. He ain't going to drag you along. For I stand at the door and knock. Any man want to let me in, I suck with him and he with me. But you got to open the door. Right. So the song I like to hear about Bruno Mars and Anderson Pac said, I'm going to leave the door. And that's what Christ is trying to do for all of us. He'll leave the door open. The, 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 the hotel company say, I'm going to leave the light on for you. That's why they, the, 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 the father of the prodigal son kept sitting on the porch. He said, one day that boy will come down that road. Yeah. And I'm going to be sitting right here to see him and I can catch him. So I, no matter how bad he looks, he won't look like that when he gets here. Uh -huh. And I'm going to tell you, no matter how bad he looks, yeah. he can clean you up. Yeah. He can turn you around. Yeah. He can place your feet on side of ground. That's never a bad time yeah. to be saved. It's a to-do list to get there. Right. And in the text, we see three objectives on the to-do list. Right, it's a to-do list. Mm -hmm. To be saved, and in the text, we got three objectives on the to-do list. The first objective is, you got to block out the noise. The other bad time to be saved, to be saved, the first thing you got to do, you got to block out the noise. Uh -huh. I love sports. But when it comes down to crucial moments, the opponent always makes a lot of noise. Mm -hmm. Let me say it on this side. Love sports. Uh -huh. yeah. But when the opponent is trying to do something major, mm -hmm. the other team makes a lot of noise. Uh -huh. yeah. On the football field, when it's fourth and one and the quarterback is trying to relay the play to the team, the other team will make a lot of noise. Uh -huh. So you'll see the quarterback step back and say, Because he know the noise is distracting progress. The noise is distracting me getting the play to the wide receiver so the wide receiver can run the right route, the line can make the right block so we can win the game. It's the fourth quarter and there's three seconds left on the clock and the man is at the free throw line to win the game. The opponent's going to make some noise. They go way the, the, the uh, little better to try to throw them off because we know if we can distract them, he can miss the shot. Right. And it's somebody in your corner doing that to you right now. Oh, they making a lot of noise. They throwing a lot of distractions. They telling you what you can and can't do. But baby, to get with Jesus, you gotta block out the noise. Yeah. The man is on the cross and on the other side, he said, Jesus, you ain't who you say you is. Oh, Jesus. So if you say, you say, you are going to come down and get up there. Man, come on, show me what you can do. Come on, we'll do. Come on, we'll do. Block out the noise. Because for some people, they ain't never going to let you go past your problems. There's some people that's always going to see who you was in 02, 92, 72. They ain't ever going to let it go. When you around people that keep saying, I remember when, you need to remember to leave. The things I used to do, I don't do no more the places I used to go. I don't go no more. What a wonderful change that has come into my life. Then I block out the noise. Because Jesus don't talk loud. Oh, I'm here to testify. He don't talk loud at all. And he ain't going to raise his volume. He ain't going to holler. He ain't going to squeal. He going to stay in his voice because I'm God. I don't got to change. You do. So you got to get somewhere quiet so you can hear what he got to say. Because yeah. contrary to power of the man, God got something to say yes, concerning you. Yeah. My thing is, we all got jobs. If we never talk to the boss to get the objectives of the day, how do we know what to do? And that's the same thing with God. If you ain't talking to him every day, how do you know what to do? The other man on the side said, boy, hush. You don't fear God. You got to block out the noise. And yeah. listen, the world is a noisy place. Yeah. Between your children, your family, social media, the news, the politicians, man, the world is loud. Yeah. But when you know God, 
You know how to block out the noise if they say go into your prayer closet. We ain't talking about you really going in your closet. Uh -huh. Your place is where you hear God the best. Yeah. For me, it's in my room on the edge of my bed, door closed and locked. Or driving up and down the highway, just be myself and I. We can talk, I can cry, I can complain, I can do whatever. And he can say, boy, shut up, I got you. Because sometimes it's all we need to hear, like, boy, hush, I got you. I, I created the world. You think I'm worried about your little old problems? Block out the law. And the devil is trying to make as much noise as he can. All this dog on homosexuality and transgender crap. Ain't but a handful of people that indulge in that life. That's just the love, that's just the devil making noise. There's a lot of people ain't studying that lifestyle or anything like that, but if you can just keep cranking up the volume, you would think that's the way of the world. Ah, my Bible said that's, that is a way that seems right. But it leads to the structure. Now is the way if you can go on the way to righteousness, you got to block out the dog. Oh, 
Oh, my hater. Zip your hater. Everybody always point the finger when or you're going to point the finger at yourself. Christ ain't coming to die for Miss Hayes in my stead. No, he came to die for Quentin in his stead. Quentin got to be truthful with him. I am a sinner saved by grace. I don't get it right every time. I fall sometimes. This was stuff the Lord revealed it on the screen behind me. I would have to crawl out of here. But he saved me. <laughs> I ain't that strong. I ain't that cute. I ain't that ugly. But he saved me. I get it wrong sometimes. Sometimes I don't like to read. Sometimes I don't like to pray. He saved me. You got to be truthful with yourself. The thief said, we up here on purpose. We did what they said we did. And guess what? It's okay. Christ knew who you was before he called you. He knew you still had some more cussing to do. He knew you like brown drinks other than coke. He know you like other things that smell other than incense. But he saved you anyway. He knew you was going to fall. It's about what you do after you fall. And once you start getting closer to God, you get tired of falling. So now you start putting yourself in a position not to fall once you be truthful with yourself. Stop pointing the finger. Stop turning looking at your neighbor. It's who in your seat. That's who he's calling. That's who he's talking to. He said, now you got to calm down but God. Before you get out of here, will you remember me when you come into your kingdom? I never told you. I'm up here for what I'm getting what I do deserve. I stole it, I killed it, I robbed it, whatever it was, Lord, I'm sorry I did. But since we got that out the way, will you remember me? When you come into your kingdom? Oh, I'm sorry for somebody that knows how to sin. That's one of my greatest paths. Lord, when I get to the end, Will you remember me? Yeah. yeah, I know I was where I was supposed to go. I know I said something I was supposed to say. I know I drank something I was supposed to do. But Lord, you said if you put it in the blood, you can store it in the seal of forgetfulness. Now to remember again, will you remember me? <laughs> you got to be truthful with yourself. Yeah. Boy, we know how to be truthful with others. Boy, we tell everybody else about their problem. Girl, you should have went left. When you went right, you should have went left. Hell, we all went right. And you got skin marks on left right now. You got to be truthful with yourself. I ain't nothing without God. And that's hard for this generation because they think they're something, period. They think they the sugar and they ice tea. You don't get that when you get home. You can't tell them nothing. They're the smartest, they're the brightest, they're the prettiest, they call them nicest. Yeah. Oh, oh, but when life hit them. When, 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 when that car turned into a hoop, then. When a new spring leak in the roof. When God brings you down to normalcy, that's when you have a problem. But for most of us that know how to humble ourselves, it's hard for God to knock us down because we already on our knees. That we already laid out on our face, prostrate, saying, Lord, help me for I messed myself up. The songwriter say, I help me because I know how to mess it up. Deliver me. Help me. Because I'm born in sin and shape and iniquity. Love of the Lord is going against the grave, not with the grave. Say to me. We were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. These bodies are built to do wrong. All the time, every time, everything that's wrong. You don't got to teach a child. I ain't got to teach my, not one of my child how children how to lie. They just make them put them together. I ain't teach them how to steal. All but one day on my back was turned and they took it. Anything that's wrong don't have to be taught. Because we've already in our sin DNA. We born in, that's why he said, you must be. Ooh, you know, say that loud enough. You must be. Born again because we are born in sin, but when we're born again, we're born into the family of Christ. But you won't ever see yourself need to be born again until you be truthful with yourself. Michael Jackson said, the man in the mirror. 
And sometimes what you see in the mirror ain't what you tell people. You find out I'm less than a hundred favor, I'm too blessed to be stressed. Oh, hallelujah. Ta, 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 ta. But when you look in the mirror, like, oh, what a rich undone. Now that's what Paul said. Rick, who said deliver me from his death? Thanks be to God. Yeah. But you can only get there once you be truthful with yourself. I'm out your Never a bad time to be saved. Three things, three objectives on to do this. First thing, you got to block out the noise. Secondly, you have to be truthful with yourself. And thirdly, you have to believe he is who he says he is. Block out the noise. Be truthful with yourself and believe he is who he says he is. This conversation really enlightened us on another thing. You see how two people can be in the same situation, but view it different. Two people, same situation, two different views. One view is, if you are Jesus, save yourself and us. Other view is, me coming to your kingdom. Remember me. Both died. Both in Rome, two different destinations. You're dying beside salvation. That's just like me being over and dying beside Popeyes. You're dying beside God's son. This is like me dying naked and I'm right beside J.C. Penny. Salvation is at your door, but you missed it. Because you were the thinking. Because even if you got them off the cross, you still would have to be saved. The other one, like, oh, he got to worry about getting you off the cross. Just save my soul. And when you get closer to Jesus, and as things seem like they are death defying and all that, you don't be as scared as you used to because you know you know the Lord. You believe he is who he said he is. And what he said is, he said, one day I'm going to crack the sky, but those who believe in me, I'm taking them back home with me. In my father's house are many mansions. Yeah. If it wasn't not so, I wouldn't have told you. I don't know about you. I'm going to get my mansion because I believe who he said he is. I'd have been down and he done brought me up. I'd have been out and he done brought me in. I'd have been sad and he made me glad. I know who he is because I believe he is who he said he is. And the man on the left knew.